OK, so this part of the article is a discussion between Bob and Linda. They're obviously co-workers. And Bob says, Linda, I've just spoken to the owners of the cocoa farm in Ghana, and I have some bad news. Now, Ghana is a West African country. It's below the Sahara Desert. And for this article, it's important because Ghana is the world's second biggest producers of cocoa beans. And cocoa beans are the things you need to make chocolate. Right. Then Linda replies, what did they say? OK, so obviously she wants to know what the, what's the problem right. here or what's going on with the farm. Mm -hmm. Bob delivers the bad news. They're not able to make as much cocoa this year again. Now, it's interesting that he puts the word again at the end, which means, well, we've had problems with right. this cocoa farm before. They haven't always been able to produce as much as they either said they would or as they had done previously. Mm -hmm. And here we use the phrasal verb, be able to do something. If you're able to do something, you have the ability and or the resources to complete a task or do something successfully. So you could say, I am able to swim, I am able to speak English well, I am not able to speak Japanese, for right. example. Bob replies, it seems that the workers there are not satisfied with how they're being treated. Mm. And that word he uses, satisfied, is an adjective that means happy with the way things are. Someone can be satisfied or not satisfied. And if they're not satisfied, they're not happy with something about their life. Yeah. An example might be, Terry was not satisfied with the restaurant's service because it gave him the wrong food. Okay, so mm. these workers aren't happy. Maybe they're not being... Right. What could be going wrong there? Maybe they're not being paid enough? Right. Or what else? What other problems? Or they don't you... like their boss? Yeah. Could be they're having to work really long hours, something Could like be. that. But whatever the problem is, we may look into that more later. Bob also says, as a result, many aren't working. So mm -hmm. the workers, they're either, they're either not coming in or they're just getting to work and they're going, no, nope, we're not doing any work today until right. things get better around here. So here we use the phrase, as a result. As a result is used to start a new sentence, and it's to show the results or the consequences of the thing we just mentioned. So as such, it's a conjunction. It connects two sentences or two phrases. So right. this happened, as a result, this happened. Mm -hmm. Here's another example. It started to rain, and we didn't have umbrellas. As a result, we got wet. Right. Now Linda says, this is terrible news. How could we respond? That word Linda uses, respond, is a verb that means to reply or answer, to say or do something in return for something someone else said or did. In this case, Linda is asking Bob what they should do now that the cocoa farm can't make as much cocoa this year. An example could be, I asked Harriet if she knew if it would rain today, but she didn't respond. She said nothing. So this is pretty bad. The farm can't right. make enough cocoa. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we said, cocoa is used to make chocolate. So we can guess that Bob and Linda work for some kind of chocolate company. They mm -hmm. make chocolate bars, chocolate sweets, other kind of chocolate products that you buy in a convenience store or a supermarket. Right. And if they don't have enough cocoa, that means they can't make as much chocolate as they want. So what are they going to do? Bob has a kind of depressing idea. What's the result of this? How can we respond to this lack of cocoa? And he says, I'm afraid we're going to have to use less cocoa in our chocolate bars for now. For now, it means right now or until things change, maybe until we can get a new cocoa supplier. But right now, it's just cut the amount of chocolate. Right. But in response to this problem, Linda has an idea. And she says, well, this could be a chance to offer some new flavors, such as fruit or vanilla, to make up for having less cocoa. The word offer is a verb that means to present or provide, to ask if people want to do something, or to make something available for sale. In this case, it's the last meaning. 
An example might be, this shop offers coffee from many different countries for sale. Another word that we saw in Linda's suggestion was flavor. They're going to offer, that's the last word, new flavors. Flavor is a noun and it means the taste of a food or a drink. Now generally when we talk about flavor, it's quite distinctive, which means you can name it, you can recognize it, you taste something, you go, oh, that is this flavor. Think of something like ice creams or candies or even types of coffee. There are different flavors for each one and when you taste them, you go, oh, that, that's chocolate flavor, that's coffee flavor, that is strawberry flavor and that is apple flavor flavor and so on. Here's an example going for ice cream. I like all flavors of ice cream except for tea and chocolate. I don't really like those flavors that much. So this is Linda's plan basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got to cut down the amount of chocolate and use less chocolate, mm -hmm. but we can add more flavors and she introduces some flavors by using the phrase such as. Right, and that phrase such as is used to give examples of something. Linda suggests that they start selling some new flavors, such as fruit or vanilla. She doesn't mean that fruit and vanilla are the only new flavors they should sell, but she's giving an example. Yeah. It's kind of like the word like. She yeah. might have said new flavors like fruit and vanilla. Or new flavors, for example, fruit right. and vanilla. There's lots of ways of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So she said fruit flavor. So you can, of course, get chocolates with cherries or orange flavor, strawberry right. chocolates. And another one she mentioned was vanilla. Now, vanilla is a flower and it's used and it uh, when you grow it, it can produce a long bean. Mm -hmm. And that bean makes this sweet fragrant flavor. Vanilla ice cream is actually the most popular ice cream worldwide. Right. Vanilla lattes are pretty popular. Now, van real vanilla is really expensive. It's one of the world's most expensive things to add to food. Mm -hmm. But scientists have learned how to make a kind of a fake vanilla flavoring, which is way cheaper, and so it's much more commonly used. Some of the most important ice creams will have real vanilla flavoring, right. but the cheaper sort will use the kind of chemical stuff. It's not bad for you, it's just not the real vanilla. Right. And she uses a phrase, make up for something. If something bad has happened and we do something to make it right, we can say that we make up for it. An example might be, Gina got her friend a very nice Christmas gift to make up for having forgotten her birthday. So the suggestion here is that to make up for having less cocoa, mm -hmm. they can offer new flavors that don't use as much cocoa. Yeah, so they'll, instead they won't be like, oh, this chocolate's not very chocolatey. They'll go, oh, this mm -hmm. chocolate has got loads of new flavors in it, fruit and vanilla and all sorts. Now, Bob likes this. He says, good idea. Right. And then he's kind of thinking maybe less about the chocolate and the products that they're going to put out, mm -hmm. but also how can we deal with the real root, the cause of the problem. Sure, right. we can put out more chocolate bars with flavors, but that's not going to help solve the main problem, which is this farm in Ghana where the workers are unhappy. So right. he's thinking about that and he makes a suggestion. He says, also, we can advise the farm owners to follow fair trade rules. So Bob's idea is to advise the farm owners to do something. To advise is a verb and it means to tell someone to do something because you think it's the right idea and the best thing to do, for example, to solve a problem. Now, advise, as I said, is a verb and be careful not to mix it up with the noun advice, A-D-V-I-C-E. Advice, the noun is spelt with a C. It's the things you give people, you give good advice. Whereas advise, the verb, is what you do. So you advise someone, you give them good advice. Okay, that's how to remember the difference. Here's an example for the verb form, advise. The teacher advised her students to think clearly about what to study at college. So yeah, Bob's idea was to talk about fair mm -hmm. trade products, okay, right. and get the company to follow fair trade rules. But what does that actually mean? Right. This is the advice 
that Bob wants to give the farm, mm. to follow fair trade rules. The term fair trade is a way of buying and selling products that makes the people who produce the goods receive a fair price and fair treatment. So what this means is that sometimes when products are produced, especially agricultural products, things that are grown from the ground, mm -hmm. food or like a cocoa cloth or something, right. yeah, uh, or even vanilla, mm -hmm. are produced. The farmers who produce the goods don't always get high wages or even fair wages. They don't get good treatment, and so fair trade is a sticker or a badge that you might see on a product label expressing the fact that the people who grew the product were treated well and received enough money for what they got, yeah, for you, what they gave, what they did. Yeah, you can look at numbers. If you think, I buy a vanilla latte, for example, right. and it costs me 75 NT. Right. So how much of that money goes to you know the coffee shop that sells you it, the people who made the cup, the company mm -hmm. that owns the 7-Eleven where you bought it, right. and so the peep, the farmers. But how much do the farmers who actually grew the coffee beans get? It's not much. Maybe one NT or a couple of NT out of that total of 75. And that maybe isn't that fair. It could be even less than that. And that, so fair trade makes sure that they get a fair wage for all the coffee because they're doing really all that hard work. They're growing the beans in the first place. And as Alex said, you now get these fair trade products, which means if a company's following it, then they've been checked at. People mm -hmm. have gone and checked their farms mm -hmm. and their factories and have said, yeah, this is all fair. Everybody's doing the right kind of work. They're not working too hard. They're getting paid the right price. They're being treated nicely and so on. So that's how fair trade comes in. We'll kind of look at a few other ideas to do with it in today's article and also tomorrow's. Back to the conversation. Linda says that should make the workers much happier. Well, of course it will. Right, it should. And Bob says, yes, their pay would go up and we could work with the farm owners to build a clinic, a school, and more for the workers and their children. Mm. So these are ideas for things that the company can do to make sure that the people who make their business possible are getting a fair share. And that word he used, clinic, is a noun that means a place people can go to see a doctor or a nurse and get treatment when they are sick. A treatment is a clinic, sorry. A clinic is much smaller than a hospital, and it doesn't have the same equipment. But it might be the place people in a small town go when they're sick. An example might be, I'm feeling a little sick today, so I'm going to the clinic to see a doctor. Yeah, a clinic would also be the sort of place where if you didn't have a really serious problem right. and you just wanted to see a doctor and get some medicine, or maybe you have a long-term problem, you don't need to always go to the hospital for it. You can just right. go to your local doctor and go, okay, can you check my blood or can, you, can I get my next medicine or something like that? You could go to a clinic for that. Maybe only a couple of doctors will work there. Maybe only one doctor would work there. Okay, so that's one of their ideas. We get a clinic, a school, more stuff for the workers and their kids. Linda is really happy about this idea. She says, great, I'll suggest this at the next board meeting. A board meeting is when all the people who direct and control a company and decide what happens to it meet to discuss the most important issues and right. make some decisions. So Linda, I guess, has to go to these board meetings. Maybe she's an important manager and she's going to suggest this idea, get everybody to pay attention and listen to it. And then they will say what they think and hopefully they will decide to move forward with this, make the company do fair trade and also change some of their own chocolate products. That's mm -hmm. what she's going to suggest and hopefully get approval for it. We'll find out a bit more about what happens with that tomorrow. Right now we're going to go to today's For You chat question.